Welcome to part 44 of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue where we left off, which was showing and selecting a option for our search screen here. So let's drop a like down below, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's continue onwards in our project. So the first thing I want to accomplish here is when we make a selection, we're not hanging on to the selection. And more importantly, there's nothing indicating to uh, ourselves or our users what I picked. So if I don't remember that I selected dead, how on earth do I know what I'm searching for? So let's hang, uh, let's actually take care of both of those, hanging on to the thing we selected as well as uh, updating our UI. So let's see how we can do that. So here we're in the RM search controller and we have a, a view model here, which is our RM search view, view model. And what we really probably want to do is based on um, our selection, we want to inform our view model and our view model here should really, you know, trigger or update in our view here. So let's, let's actually build out all that functionality. So let's go back into our uh, search view view model. And I will add a new function here. I'm going to say this will be public. And you'll notice actually, we don't actually have a whole lot going on in here. So let me just add these before we dump a bunch of code in here. And I'm gonna say public func, and this will be a set. And we're gonna say set value. This value will be a string for option. And this option, once again, is an rm search input view view model dot dynamic option. And I guess what we can do is hold on to our selections here in a dictionary. So I'm gonna create a dictionary and this dictionary will be private and perhaps we'll call this option map. And we do want this to be a, a var so we can mutate it. And it will be of type this option, this dynamic option where the value is a string starting off as empty. And here we can say option map. We're gonna say this is the option assign a value. And if you do command B to compile and build your code, it should be working. Back in our view controller, down at the, let's see if I can find it, wherever we did the callback right here, we can simply say self dot view model. We're gonna say set selection for option. Selection is what we get back in the closure and option is what we got in our um, in our delegate method, we don't want to leak any memory. So we are going to capture self in a weak capacity. And I'm also going to set this on the view model on the main queue. So we'll say, do this on the main queue like that. Go ahead and build. This error is just Xcode being dumb. We'll see it go away in like two seconds. All right, bear with it. There it goes. Okay. So sometimes if you see a weird error in your project is building, it's just Xcode being Xcode. So you'll, you'll get used to that. So now we're hanging on to our selection here, but once again, we need to update our view. So let's see how we will accomplish that. So we are configuring our view here, our primary search view with uh, the view model. And let me actually see where we're doing that. We create a hang on to a view model here, and then we pass in our view model into this RM search view. Alrighty. So we pass this into our RM search view. And what we want to then do is we want to register or somehow listen for changes on that map. And once we get a change, we want to update the search input view. So let's actually, let's actually first figure out a way to listen to changes on our view model. So I'll actually go and say view model and I want something along the lines of uh, register option change uh, block. And what I want to receive in here is essentially uh, two things. I want to receive a tuple and this tuple should be something along the lines of maybe the option, the dynamic option that we have, as well as the new value that was set to it. So obviously if we build this now, it's going to yell at us because this register thing like does not exist since I just made it up. So we're gonna jump into our view model here and we are gonna actually add a function to do this. So I'm gonna basically copy and paste it. And if you think about it, all that we want to do here is use an escaping block. And this block here is going to return to us uh, whatever we want uh, to listen for. In my case, what I specified is a tuple 
and our tuple will have the first element be the dynamic option, as well as the second element of string, which is our selection. So let's go and line break this since the parentheses might be getting a smidge confusing. And if you try to build now, you'll see that everything is building. So we need to actually hang on to this block. So the way that we will hang on to this block is as follows. I'll say self dot uh, option map update block will be block and we'll obviously create a global instance of this closure. And to create an instance of the closure, I'm going to cheat and just copy and paste this since it is a rather long uh, signature here. Alrighty, and we do need to make this optional because by default, it is actually going to be nullable. It's gonna be null in the beginning. Hence, it was yelling at me and now the errors are gone. Now, finally, what I can do is every time we call this set here, what we'll do is we can say call this closure if it exists. And what I'll pass in is our tuple and our tuple will be our option that we just set and then the value that was set as well. So tuple, pass that in and we should be able to build and get the result back. So if I come back into our view and let's say I just put a breakpoint here, or maybe I'll just, um, let me actually just print it out. So I'll say print out string describing our tuple. We should get, once we select uh, one of the options, a print of the option as well as the value that we selected for it from the choices. So let me expand our console and get rid of all that uh, kind of junk in there. I'll pick gender and then maybe we'll pick gender list and we should see a tuple printed out where the first thing is the dynamic option gender and the second thing is our selected value which is genderless. So cool, so that's all well and good. Once again, we still need to update that uh, button so on our search input view where the buttons actually reside, what I'll go and do in here is create another public function. And this public function will basically just take in that tuple. So we'll say public func uh, did update, or maybe I'll call this um, update option, which will be rm search input view view model dot dynamic option value will be a string like that. And I guess once we come inside of here, we have two choices. We can try to find the button that we are you know, looking for uh, and just update its text, or we can you know, send this uh, selection, this new value that we've set on the option to the view model for this input view, and then update the button. Essentially, we're doing the same thing Hanging onto it in the view model is slightly more correct from an architectural perspective because we shouldn't be updating this view directly. However, just to get this working, let's first just update it directly. So to update it directly, it is rather simple. We want to hold on to our stack view in the global scheme. So what we can do is we can for loop over its uh, children and find the appropriate uh, find the appropriate button to update the text on. So that was all a mouthful. Let me actually go and hang on to it here. So if we create a stack view, I'll say self.stackView will be stack view. Now we don't have a self.stack view, so let me come up here and create it. So this will simply be a private var stack view. And it will be optional because remember, we don't always have a stack view. We don't always have dynamic button options. And once we come inside of here, what we want to do is update options and if you recall the dynamic option actually has a uh, raw value so we want to find the button where the text is that already so now that we have this here we can say guard let stack view equal stack view and we can say give me the arranged sub views that you have so these will all be buttons we can do for button in buttons now we want to find the appropriate button. So let's say title will be button dot. And I want to say there's a title label on here. Button dot, is it a text label? I want to say it does exist. We can do button. And actually these buttons also do in fact have tags. So that's the other thing we can go about doing. So let's see how we did this. So we have view model dot options. 
So up here we can say did tap button and the way that we're handling it is we're getting the appropriate button. So we can actually copy and paste this exact code instead of for looping over all of them. So the way we get our options is exactly the same. And I'm actually going to just combine this guard statement here. And now we also have our selected here, which will be our target option. And let me actually see how we will do this. So we have a tag and it looks like we actually can't do this because we don't have a sender. So let me actually call this function and then I'm gonna debug this. We're gonna debug this together because I don't wanna cut the video and kind of figure it out on my own because this is, this is how we learn. So uh, once we call this closure, we're gonna say self.search input view and then we call that function update. This will be tuple.0, the first value in the tuple. This will be tuple.1, the second value. Alrighty. And now this will essentially go ahead and call this function here. And inside of here, we just wanna find the appropriate button and update it. And I don't wanna loop over necessarily all of them. It would be a little more intelligent if we can do it a better way. So let's see how we can do this. So I actually think there is a way we can leverage this. So we can get all the options out and then we can find the index that we want of the option and that'll be the same as the button. So now that we've got all the options here that we know we're showing a button for, we wanna find the index. And this index we're looking for is essentially going to be from all options, we wanna get the first index uh, of, and we wanna pass in an option. And this will be the option that we're passing into this particular function. So this will give us the, the index and the array that resides our uh, target option. Then from buttons, we can use the same index and we can say set a title on it. And let me just go ahead and do it in a bit of a better way. So we'll say let button will be this of type UI button. And let me just go ahead and build and let's see why this is yelling at me. So let's see buttons here in next cannot convert value of type UI view to specified UI button. So here we'll say UI button, alrighty, because the arranged subviews here, we already know this is going to be a collection of buttons. We only added buttons, so we can actually just cast it up there. And finally, I can say button set title. And this is essentially what we did up here. We actually did a attributed title. So I will copy this, paste it here. And what we'll set for the actual title will be our value dot uppercase. This is what we selected, same font. The only thing I'll change is the color. We'll do the link color, which just kind of looks blue. So it will actually kind of mimic uh, a selection. So let's build and run. Let's see if this works. And then I'll have to explain that again because it was a little janky. So let's say we want to change the gender. We'll select that. We'll hit female. So boom, it updated, hit it again, male. And let me actually go ahead and change the status here as well. It'll be dead now and it all updates. Awesome. So just to recap, we basically bubbled that call all the way down through the search view, then to the search input view. Uh, and we are saying that we will update this view with the target option and the value. So we want to show blue text with this value text. The option is used to derive which buttons text we want to update. So what we're doing to do that is we know that this button has a tag zero, this one is one. These are the only two options available in the character search configuration. So we do a few things here. We first get all the buttons that we've added to our stack view. We obviously now hold the stack view in the global scope so we can reference it. We cast it to a collection of UI buttons. We then get all the options from the view model and I realize the naming is super confusing. These op that options under view model refers to uh, each of these, right? So you can pick the status as well as the gender here, not the choices themselves. Once we've done that, we say from all options, give me the index of our target option, which is the thing we are updating. Once we've got that index, we can make our assumption and say that this in our buttons array is the button at that index, and I can actually just do that. And finally, we'll just say on that button, set attributed title, and this is basically just updating the UI. 
One thing um, I will call out before wrapping up this video is obviously there's no way at the moment to reset your selection. So let's say you don't want to filter by gender and I've selected genderless, you kind of have to select something now. Um, there, there is no premise of canceling. So I guess we could in theory add a uh, all option in here and that'll just kind of nil out this filter. So that's how that will work. And as a byproduct of doing all this um, passing down business into our search input view, we accidentally took care of the other thing that I touched on earlier, which is hanging on to uh, the, the value for our search view model. And our search view model will actually be responsible for executing the search. And if you recall in our search controller, when you tap on the search button, see if I can find it, it's going to actually call this function here. And if you recall, the search button is at the top right of the search screen. Right now, nothing's happening, but we'll want this execute search function on the view model. So since we're already basically, you know, kind of in there, let me just go and add this as well. I'll come here and say public func execute search. And this execute search will have a few responsibilities uh, business logic wise. So first is create request based on filters, send API call and notify view of results, no results or an error. And that's essentially what we'll go and do in here because this view model already hangs on to uh, the particular configuration. So it already knows if we're searching characters or locations or episodes. We've not now also held on to a uh, option map here. And I will actually move this up here. We now also hang on to this option map here, which uh, includes uh, A, if we want any query uh, arguments. And if we do, what are they, right? So maybe in this case, we'll say, hey, I want to filter gender to be male. Show me, you know, characters with the first name Rick, you know, a name of Rick and a gender of male. One thing that I just said there that I just remember we don't actually or noticed, I don't, we don't actually hang on to in here is the actual name of the user uh, that we're searching for. So if you go and type something in here, we want to actually hang on to the name. So let's, Come in here and say private var search text, and this will be uh, a empty string by default. And I will actually add one more function and say set um, query text. And here we will actually say self dot search text is text. Essentially, once the user types in here and either hits the search button on the keyboard or the search button up here, we should be able to get the uh, typed uh, actual information out. So um, if I click on this search, if we don't have any text in here, we should be able to get it out. And respectively, if I tap on the search button down here, we should not only see the keyboard disappear, but we should be able to send that text into the view model. So that's all I've got for this video, a little bit all over the place. So let me know in the comments if this one confused you. I'm happy to help. I got a little confusing with passing stuff between so many objects, uh, I think so at least. So drop a like before clicking away. Appreciate you guys sticking around if you've made it this far. I will see you in the next video. And actually before I forget to do so, let's go to our folder here. Let's stage everything we have done. I'll commit it, commit it and say extend search and push up our changes. And once again, I will eventually be linking the repo in all the videos. I don't think I've done so yet. Maybe I have by the time you're watching this. So it is a public repo on my GitHub. So feel free to take a look, look at the code. And uh, yeah, my hope is it'll serve as a living, breathing um, project for people to reference as they learn. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part.